Hello everyone, happy Easter. I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth from the Seas of the Word community and I'd like to welcome all of you that are joining us today. And yes, today is Easter again. We are in the octave of Easter. Today, Monday of Easter, Easter Monday, April 18th. The church in her great wisdom gives us eight days to celebrate Easter, just like Christmas. We have eight days to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. It's such a big mystery that we can never celebrate in one day. So we have this week, another holy week, but in a different way. A week that we celebrate the mysteries of the life and the resurrection of our Lord. So during these eight days, it is Easter again. With the same grace and the same solemnity that we celebrated Easter yesterday in the, in, is, during Easter Sunday. So for the readings of this day... We will read for the first reading, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 14. Then we go to verses 22 to 33. Let's start the reading of the Word of God for this day. When the day of Pentecost had come, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, Let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law, but God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I would not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades. Or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, and you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants to his throne. For seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, He had poured out, out this, he had poured out this that you both see and hear. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Peter, full of the Holy Spirit, standing in front of the crowd, proclaims the resurrection of our Lord, proclaim his life. And we know that a couple of days ago, Peter was a weak man, a man who wasn't, what, that wasn't able to stand for his faith, to stand for his beliefs, to say when he was asked, are you the, one of the disciples of this man that we want to crucify? And he said, no, 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 that's not me. He wasn't, he, he wasn't confident enough. He wasn't courageous enough to say, yes, I am his disciple and I will die with him if it is needed. No, Peter ran away. But today we see a Peter is standing in front of a crowd proclaiming the, resurrec the resurrection of Jesus. And more, and being very bold to say, this man, you crucified, you killed this man. This man was the son of God that you killed. Peter had grown a lot. Peter received the Holy Spirit. We see here when the day of Pentecost had come. So we are projected to Pentecost already in this celebration today. 
we see that the Holy Spirit came to strengthen Peter to show us that nothing is impossible for the power of God. Nothing is impossible for God. A weak man, a chosen one, but very weak in his humanity, was able to be strengthened by the Holy Spirit, by the resurrection of our Lord, to stand before a crowd and say, this man that you have killed, this man was raised up by God, and this man is the one who gives us salvation. He is the one from whom David testified. David knew Christ. How? He was a prophet. He received this inner knowledge. David received the grace of God to understand that the Savior was to come and he was mystically united with the Savior already. Peter is showing that even David, foreseeing Christ, believed in him. How can we now, how can we not believe in him now that we see his wonders, that we see his works, that we see the graces that we receive from him? No, we are all called to know and to believe that the resurrection is true. The resurrection happened. The resurrection in, is here and now with each one of us. The Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 16 today says, Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my God. I have no good apart from you. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices, my body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol, or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life, in your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Protect me, God, for in you I take refuge. This is the prayer of a heart who believes in God. Protect me. I know that you are my refuge. You are my chosen portion. You are the one that I believe. So protect me, Lord. Protect me by your resurrection. Protect me with your life. And the gospel today from St. Matthew chapter 28, verses 8 to 15 says, After Mary Magdalene and the other Mary had heard the message of the angel that Jesus had been raised from the dead, they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While they were going, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests everything that had happened. After the priests had assembled with the elders, they devised a plan to give a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, You must say, His disciples came by night and stole him away while we were sleeping. If this comes to the governor's ear, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story is still told among the Jewish to this day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First thing in the morning, Mary Magdalene runs to the tomb to see the body of Jesus, but she doesn't find it. And then the angel tells her that he was raised by God. So she ran to tell the disciples. Here it says, with fear and great joy. Fear of what? Oh, fear that it wasn't true. Fear that it is so amazing what had taken place that she wasn't sure. But also full of joy because she knew that the promises of the Lord was trustworthy. His promise was forever. So she knew that, she, they knew that with the other Mary, they knew that the promise of God was trustworthy. They could trust. So that's why they were full of joy. But Jesus... He himself appeared to his disciples, saying, Greetings, peace be with you. I am here. And they worshipped him. They were so amazed by the presence of Jesus. And he says, Do not be afraid. 
one of the great great graces that we receive from the resurrection is not being afraid of being afraid of anything because God has the power to resurrect it, his sons and daughters. So if he has the power to resurrect people, he will have the power to do whatever he wants. So we should not fear, only trust in the Lord. And he says, tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Jesus is talking about the ascension already. The resurrection of our Lord. His resurrection is a great mystery. And we are all called on this day to ponder, to pray and to meditate with his resurrection. What does that mean to me? What do I take from his resurrection? To believe in his resurrection, to believe in his light, to believe in his light, to believe in him. And by believing in him, we can be able to go and announce the resurrection of Christ to others. May the Lord bless us today and gives us a grace to proclaim his resurrection, to tell our loved ones that Christ is risen. He is truly risen. Amen.